All right, thank you. It's uh, 704 and we do have a quorum of all five board members here. Apologize for the delays. We got a couple technical issues that we're working through and if you're watching this recording, we will work on the live stream as soon as possible. Um, thanks everybody for gathering tonight. We appreciate it. We're gonna begin with uh, invocation and then followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to gather here tonight. Uh, we've enjoyed the longer evenings this week and uh, the beauty of the e beauty of the nights in Amelia County. Thank you for allowing us all to travel here safely and please be with us this evening as we travel back home. Thank you especially for our guests who've joined us here this evening to help us with uh, the business of the county. Please guide all of the decision makers in uh, providing us wisdom and thoughtfulness to think through and make the best decisions possible. Uh, please be with all of us for the rest of the week, and uh, we pray for those who are ill or recovering. Amen. The flag's in the hall, so we just we just look that way. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, do we have any adjustments uh, to the agenda this evening? Yes, sir. All right, we will just move up our recognition of Judge Southall so he doesn't have to wait through uh, as many items. We'll just adjust the order of that then. Do we have a motion to proceed with the agenda? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. All opposed? Thank you. All right, and the first item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. We've got uh, three meetings here, our February 10th workshop, February 17th regular meeting, and the January 25th joint public hearing with the Planning Commission. Do not have any uh, comments or changes for any of those three, minute, three sets of minutes? Do you have a moment for review? I will welcome a motion for that. Any, any I'll make that. All right, we got a motion to approve all three as a block. Discussion? All those in favor of approving all three sets of minutes as a block, response sign of aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign? All right, thank you. All right, and now we've got our February financial reports um, from the Treasurer's Accountability, Revenue, Expenses, and Accounts Payable. Any comments uh, or questions on those reports. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, I move we approve as a block. Thank you. Any discussion? All right, all those in favor of approving the four, the four financial reports, respond with aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Thank you. All right, and we've come to the public comment portion of the meeting. It should be a little more challenging, not live streaming, but if we get live streaming going back, we will reopen uh, opportunity for comments. Do we have any emails or written comments that have come in? We do have an email. Thank I'll be you. glad to read. Thank you, please. Allison Cruz from Allison Cruz of Perkinson Road in Jetersville. I wanted to share this evening that the public notice you saw in the media bulletin monitor for an expansion of over 3,000 acres on a biosolids application in District 1 from the Appomattox River to Genito Road will be undergoing some adjustments as the adjacent landowners address list was filled with inaccurate information. Human waste used on the land is a DEQ permitted activity and is already practiced on over 11,000 acres in the county, much in the same region of District 1. Neighbors and concerned citizens can reach out to Stephanie Bowman, the Senior Water Compliance Inspector of the Virginia Department of Environmental Quality at 540-598-0453 and the DEQ website has more information about the application request. Anyone is also welcome to reach out to me, Allison Cruz, at 804-307-9608 to learn more. I thank y'all for your time. Thank you for sharing, period. Sorry. 
Is there anyone in person here tonight who has a comment or Mr. Springer does? All right. Mr. Mr. Springer. Yes, sir. You're welcome to stand and just give us your name and, and where you live. I can't hear you because I can't hear Holly, but I hope you can hear me. Uh, I'm sort of an old fella, and I go to the gym over here, right building, and I work out. Uh, the equivalent is among the most beautiful I've ever used in my life. And 55 years ago, I used to divide and build exercise equipment to sell it. My brother and I wouldn't build this to do this when I retired out of the Navy. Uh, so all my life, I worked out. And you say, well, why would a guy my age go over to the gym and work out? Well, if I don't, this shoulder don't work so good. This one don't work good. The elbows start hurting me. My knees give way. But using the equipment over there, I tell you, it's beautiful. Sometimes I'm the only person there using it. That's a shame. Mm -hmm. We got it crowded into a little closet. Only about a third of the size of the space you need to really use the equipment. And you can't take that kind of equipment out a person who's never worked out and say, okay, here it is. You've got to have somebody to set up a program for it, show him how to use it, explain to him what muscles that works and what it doesn't do. Uh, if you don't, you know, if you go there by himself, he'll work out a couple of times, he get discouraged and he'll leave, which is really a waste of the equipment. So what I'm requesting you to do is to go and look at it, find a space where it can be set up and used, and get someone who knows how to use it, knows how to set up programs, and can supervise the people and show them how to use it to get the best results. If you don't, it's a waste of time, you might as well go put it in the junkyard. And it's beautiful equipment. I love it. And I go in, I'm there all by myself. I can use any equipment I want. Nobody bothers me. And that, that's really a shame. Sometimes, though, when it gets real crowded, there are two or three other people will come. <laughs> so please do something about that. Or I bet you there are hundreds of people here in Amelia County that could use an exercise program. Especially if they're old guys like me and the knees don't work so good anymore. But I have to stay in shape because I've got to go back to work. The founding documents that you have on the wall in there, this is what I do. I make the frames, I frame the founding documents and I put them in high schools and colleges. At no expense for the schools. And I got 14 cents to do this coming year for a county that has 14 high schools. So I gotta, I gotta be in good shape in order to do this. So if you would be so kind as to go over and look at it. Now, the people over there do a good job. They keep it clean, they keep it sterilized, they do the very best they can but he doesn't have the personnel. And I don't think I'm knocking Glenn, and Glenn is, he is fantastic. We're really lucky to have somebody like him in our county. And so, but Thank you. I think that just about covers it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I did a first aid program with you over in the uh, crew. I remember it something years ago. I remember. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming to speak to us. Thank you. Uh, I will just parks and rec is one of the top four priorities for the board. We appreciate those those sentiments. We do have a long term plan. Um, I'll at least commit to going and visiting the gym, which I have not visited that one. 
I've and been, I've been it and I can totally agree with that. Well, I'm sure he's I'm sure he's right. I don't doubt it, but I'll I will listen to his request and I will pay it a visit as well. And um, I mark the follow up. We'll see if we can make sure that's in future plans to be addressed. Any other uh, comments in person tonight? All right. All right, so that ends that section of our agenda. We'll move on to the um, staff committee reports, presentations. And as we said, we'll go ahead and bump up our recognition of uh, Judge Valentine Southpaw Jr. Um, how do we want to do it up there? Yeah, then we'll just come up here a little bit. And do you want to grab that? Thank you. Um, Judge Southpaw, do, do you mind coming forward? I want to thank you and your wife for coming tonight and uh, all your guests as well. We appreciate having several judges in here to recognize uh, Judge Southall. Just read through this resolution if you don't mind to, to recognize your service. A resolution of appreciation from the County of Amelia recognizes Valentine W. Southall Jr. for dedicated service as juvenile and domestic district court judge of Amelia County. Whereas Judge Valentine W. Southall Jr. is a native son of Amity County, a second generation attorney and jurist, and whereas Judge Southall is a graduate of Amity County Public Schools, Virginia Military Institute, and the University of Virginia with a Juris Doctor in 1972, and whereas Judge Southall married Lori Camp Southall and made their home in Amelia and raised a family of four children, and whereas Judge Southall is a veteran having honorably served in the United States Army Reserves. And where Judge Southall worked as Assistant Attorney General for the Commonwealth before entering into private practice in Amelia County with Thomas Stark III. And whereas Valentine W. Southall Jr. was elected to the Virginia General Assembly as Judge of the Juvenile and Domestic Relations District Court, the 11th Judicial District, encompassing Amelia County on October 31st, 1994. He was subsequently reelected to four more terms, having provided the citizens of Amelia with 26 years of dedicated, and faithful service, spending three generations upon his retirement on June 30th, 2020. Due to the heavy caseload over a wide geographic district during a Commonwealth budget crisis in 2011, the Virginia Lawyers Weekly described Judge Southall as the hardest working judge in Virginia as he had a caseload that was more than 122% of the statewide average. All are remembering the family history of everyone came into this court. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Amelia County Board of Supervisors recognizes the service, loyalty, and dedication of Judge Valentine W. Southall Jr., extends appreciation for his dedicated service in his career as Judge of the Juvenile and Domestic Relations District Court of Amelia County, extends the love and affection of the grateful citizens of Amelia County, and wishes he and his family many years to come with good health, good times, and the ability to live life at his own schedule. Adopted today, March 17th, 2021. Thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate it. And we are proud. <laughs> we are proud to present you with your with your robe for your service. Thank you. And I don't think we have it called in tonight, but we also understand that we're gifting you with your chair, which we believe was special, <laughs> special made for your, for your height as well. Well, so. that's, that's very, very much. So I admired that chair for years. Well, <laughs> the, uh, the newer judge does not have a need for quite as high of a chair, so we're, we're happy to see oh, you. <laughs> Busy didn't tell me that. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, we thank you. Well, I'm, I'm very grateful. Uh, you said everything I could have said. But, uh, I'm a I'm a million by birth and by choice. I was away for a while and came back, and uh, as that uh, this means a whole lot to me. I spent a lot of my life looking through, you know, records and all that sort of thing, and seeing names. And so I suppose someday some kid. We'll be rumbling through your records and see my name and say, who was that guy? Uh, but it's very, it's a very great honor to have this resolution. Uh, I've met and have not uh, actually officially or formally by letter thank the board because it's been 20, 
six years. And I don't know whether Frank was on the board or about to come on the board when I first started, but he was he and I served on the school board together. That's right. And That's right. Taylor was on the board either at the beginning or near the beginning. And throughout the time that I've been a judge, I really appreciated the efforts that the board of supervisors have gone to to accommodate me. Um, we didn't know about it. I hadn't been a resident judge here in Amelia for 20 some years. Didn't know about an office. I was, you know, kind of at a loss for that too. And y'all worked through that a lot, uh, and particularly the people who are here today. Uh, but you, your predecessors and what you all have done too for the court system is good. It's been a great service to the county. I do what my wife is here, and we've been married for longer than I was on the bench. Uh, she has encouraged me inspired me because of all the people need recognition she probably needs it more than than i do not only for being putting up with me but she's a great teacher she's been a teacher for a long long time still teaching in chesterfield county and i do there's some people here missy melissa gill i told her <clears throat> it's a good day i retired because I would have fired her. Well, <laughs> so I think she's behind all this, but then she was, <laughs> she's great. Gary Pugh and Bailey, and with that, those two people, uh, and the people like them all over this district, I don't think, I mean, you know, they couldn't function. The judge doesn't do anything but eat the table that's set for him by the, by the people who work for the courts. And then I also want to thank Joe Teefee, who's a circuit court judge, who's here today, and Perry Royal, who's succeeded me uh, on the bench, and, uh, just for being here. Uh, and Derek Goff, I was looking at him, I think I got two that is yeah. back there, it's hard to recognize it. But his people got me out of here because they helped me get those desks and all that stuff, furniture out of my out of my office when I was leaving, and that was not an easy thing. And so he sent people down, and they were, they were very accommodating. So the only other thing I said, I'm sitting here thinking, I believe, you know, I went to school for my whole 12 years here. That was the library, I believe, and oh, it might have come this way some. I think this was the principal's office, and <laughs> I never, made it. I never made it until tonight to the principal's office. Gives me a sign of a misspent youth that I really wasted the time I could have used to be. Uh, never got there, but here I am tonight. So thank you all for your consideration and your resolution. And good luck to you all. And Frank, and I would think that Mr. Springer, it, it takes me back. Because I was one of, the, as a lawyer, he came to, he and his wife came to my office and they were, uh, their, their daughter teaches in the school, so oh, I don't know if she still teaches or not, but anyway, it's just a nice man. And I remember they, for, well, I was one of the first places they came and they didn't know where they were going, they didn't know how to get along, didn't know anything, and it was just nice to see him here. And uh, I appreciate y'all's consideration of what he has said. Anyway, thank Frank, you. thank you, yes. Taylor, thank you, and all of you. Thank, thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman, we need to need to make a motion to approve the recommendation. Thank you. I appreciate it. Make a motion that we approve that resolution. All right, and we've got a motion to approve the resolution for Judge Southall. All those in favor, sign of aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Thank you for making that official. Appreciate it. All right. Moving along, Ms. Worley, thank you for uh, holding for us for a moment. We appreciate it. We'll turn it over to you for the VDOT monthly status report. We can't, uh, we can't hear you. Are we? No. Let me see. She just needs to Let's see. about now? Yes, thank you. Okay, great. Sorry about that. Um, so I'll start with an update on maintenance. I think I mentioned um, last month, it was right after the um, Valentine's weekend ice storm. So 
Um, obviously, we had a lot of tree debris um, related to that ice storm, and um, our Richmond district employed a debris removal contractor who is responsible for picking up all of that tree debris, also um, trimming any um, leaning or broken limbs in the right of way um, that might have snapped off but not fallen all the way to the ground yet. And so they have been busy working in the southern portions of the Richmond district over the last month in our Petersburg and South Hill residencies, but they are mobilizing in Amelia County starting tomorrow, actually. So um, you'll see tree crews first, um, cutting branches. Um, they'll be leaving them in the right of way for the next crew that's going to haul that debris to come in and haul um, and take all of that away and process it. So. The anticipated completion right now to finish up all of the debris work in Amelia is um, by mid April. So about a month from now, they should be completely cleared out um, and have that right of way clear from that ice storm. Um, in terms of traffic studies, I did want to mention that the Route 604 um, Chula Road speed study is still underway. Um, I believe we kicked that off shortly before um, the last board meeting, and um, that will also extend into Powhatan County. Um, golf cart use, I know, Mr. Easter, we've been communicating back and forth about that and what some other localities in the Richmond District have done. Um, our district traffic engineering group is currently working with central office just to confirm our interpretation of the Code of Virginia as it relates to golf cart use. Um, I think as we've discussed, um, our district has been consistent as a whole, um, and we're just trying to clarify that we're being consistent with what other districts are doing statewide. Um, so more to come on that, and if there are any changes to um, our interpretation of that code section, um, I'll certainly let you all know if you want to take action in some other way. <laughs> Um, Can I just note then, to, to others of where there was some news in the Times Dispatch that Hanover, for example, had adopted, I think it was Hanover, Gordon yeah. yeah. had adopted um, permission for that. And then uh, Ms. Worley helped us find some other counties too. So we're just, I appreciate you looking at that once again. It's obviously not our mo most pressing thing, but when we see other parts of the state doing it, we want to make sure that we're taking advantage of things that our citizens want to. So thank you for that follow up. Yeah. Um, and then in terms of construction, as you all know, the Route 360 bridge replacements are currently underway. Um, obviously, that'll be an extended construction project, um, but it's currently on track to finish up next summer, summer 2022. Um, and the Clementown Road bridge repair work is also underway with the detour, and that is scheduled to wrap up, I believe, in May or June of this year. Um, so that um, we're coming up on the completion date for that bridge repair project. Um, and then the final thing of note from construction is that our surface treatment contract will be kicking off shortly, um, and they will be starting with patching operations countywide in June. So you'll start to see um, some work on that surface treatment contract. So um, that's all I have for this month, unless any of you all have questions for me. No. no, thank you for your time today. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Our next item is the Amelia County school system and we do have Dr. Harper here and we welcome you and we'll turn the agenda uh, over to you to talk through. Thank you. Um, March is equity and education month. Uh, I also want to let you know during our monthly board meeting, the school board approved the proposed FY22 budget. Um, also in the March meeting, Ms. Bullock was recognized by Amelia County Public Schools and No Kid Hungry for her extraordinary, excuse me, tough with these masks, extraordinary <laughs> efforts to feed Amelia children this year. Um, our K-12 enrollment for February was 1566. Our current ADM is 1558. Um, and just a little side note, one unique characteristic this year is that we have some whole harmless funding 
that assist our budget. So we're a little less dependent on the ADM this year. Um, I received a request this evening to share information about carryover funding. Over the FY20 carryover was approximately a million dollars. And due to how the accountants um, required the posting of the county tariff funds that was allocated to the schools and the timing of the purchases, um, the total available funds was actually 300,000 higher. So I did um, prepare this evening a document similar to what was provided last year. Um, I think this is what we were being asked for. Yeah, I'll just ask for you. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, so that will give you an idea of how we can uh, spending those funds. Uh, all Thank you. This evening, um, we are the recipient of another CARES type grant. These funds are used to enhance our summer programming for students who may need support and to help cover the cost of providing virtual instruction for next year for those families who select fully virtual instruction. Um, it is our goal to try to relieve classroom teachers of the dual responsibilities of providing both in person and virtual instruction next year. We have a committee that will be meeting on Monday afternoon to begin preparing um, for next year's plan. Um, the grant that we have covers a multi-year period, so funds not used this year do carry to next year and FY23 school years. Um, your approval of this allocation is requested this evening. You just have a copy of that document in your um, Note. And the one final thing uh, regarding our financial report for February, our revenues and expenditures are at 56.44%. Expected level of revenues and expenditures for this time of year would be 66%. And Ms. Bullock is here if you have any questions regarding those financial reports. So we do ask for your approval of those um, CARES funds. Uh, page 85. It's CCRSA, Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplement Appropriations Act. This is the 955. Yes. Okay. Any questions or? No more to come. Thank you. We've got a motion to approve this. Any comments or questions on that? All right. All those in favor of approving the supplemental spending appropriation, which sign of aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Thank you. I think that'll be very necessary. I this page will have a lot more summer um, work to do than in many years. We we expect the cost to be probably three times what it normally is, and mm -hmm. then um, our budgets do not contain funding for virtual instruction provided outside of the division, which is what most school divisions will be doing next year. And so these funds um, will help us in both of those endeavors for the next two years. Good. Thank you. And I'm sure Ms. Cave has your updated numbers for what the school board has approved for budget and we'll continue to work forward with that. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Okay. All right. Um, we've got the board supervisor committee and activity report. We'll just uh, run through um, and hit highlights from each member. District one. Um, it was a pretty busy month. Just trying to like I said, I'll hit the highlights and then we'll I'll email this to go in the minutes. Mm -hmm. um, planning commission meeting in February. We talked about some stuff we're gonna talk about tonight. Had numerous emergency managers meetings concerning the shelters. Actually had a hot wash afterwards to kind of see what we can improve. <clears throat> Still did some work on the IT position. I set it on the fair committee last night. Oh. That was it was good. Mm -hmm. Um just to get some information on how things go. Social services. Uh, Ms. Pullen 
So she's at full capacity now as far as employees due to the latest uh, state funding position, state funded position. Um, at the Piedmont Jail board meeting this morning, we still average about 63 folks housed there. We're kind of in the middle. Prince Edward and Nottaway are above us. So we're kind of in the middle. And that's about 17.3% of the population there, what we put there. So that's why we'll probably see there are about 140,000 over budget. And that will need to be absorbed to the localities. So we may see an increase of about 24,000. And I had a radio system update this afternoon. There'd be more to come on that. That's about it. Thank you. I think if I remember, sorry, Carla, I think she, Carla was planning in what she expected for the for jails okay. increase. To, if I, is that what y'all recall from her? I, I think, yeah, okay. Thank you. Uh, District 2. Yeah, I, I emailed all you this detail today, so I'll just be brief, but um, attended the same joint POS, BOS piece planning commission meetings that you all did. I attended uh, four broadband update meetings one every week of the month and um, two CRC meetings. One was postponed, so we had two this month and found out today that we're currently not eligible for EDA grants due to um, our unemployment rates are too low and our median income is too high. They, they, mm -hmm. they tell me that this can change over time and we may be able to apply for something some other time, but right, right this minute, we're not eligible for EDA grants, mm -hmm. which was a disappointment. Uh, I attended two Piedmont senior resources, a finance committee meeting and a board meeting, an animal shelter meeting with the awardee of the contract for the um, feasibility study, which went well, um, EDA meeting, Two, I attended two Zoom town halls, one with the Farmville Chamber, which had Dr. Adekoya, the Piedmont Health District director involved, and I listened to her, and also one with Spanberg, who had some doctors from Enrico and um, Richmond, I believe, just talking about COVID vaccines. And that's this this well, last week we attended Joseph and I both attended a VACO class. It's the last one for me for supervisor certification, the fifth of five, on the role of purpose driven policy, deliberation, and decision making. And then attended a technology task force kickoff and a GIS kickoff meeting. Both projects are off and running. It's a busy month, lots of good things are happening. Good, thank you. District three. Uh, planning commission meeting, as we talked about, uh, I'd like to mention for anybody listening, uh, we had a great workshop last week. Mm -hmm. uh, I think as always, I, I'm, I'm glad we started those workshops and, and glad we're continuing to do them. I, I think it's a great relaxed environment to just listen and learn and discuss. Um, uh, the, I had the uh, library committee meeting last night there. Uh, they got the, uh, finalized draft of their needs assessment. Um, and it was presented last night, so they should be gathering the, getting the final figures on that and we'll probably be presenting that within the next month, I, I do believe, or so. Okay. Um, I didn't ask for a specific time, but, but it, it was I'll just put a reminder. pretty impressive. Um, looks good. Uh, radio communications, um, that's moving along well. Uh, the, uh, I'd also like to mention, that, you know, there's a, the uh, courthouse light project. I know it's not a official committee, but um, I see see you guys out and about. A lot of us are um, um, working on, I guess, side projects, unofficial county projects. There's a lot. There's a lot of um, public private partnerships going on right now. A lot of stuff in the works, and I know we're heavily involved with them. So um, I'm excited to see, like the the light project has been completed, and see and hear of a few others that. Are possibly up and coming that I think the uh, citizens will enjoy. Agree. All right, thank you. You, you want to go? I'll close out. Yeah, I'll go ahead and go. Uh, PSR meeting, of course, and we attended uh, attended that with Mr. Uh, Scott. We had a CMPT meeting uh, right after the last meeting that we had here. Another one coming up on uh, tomorrow morning as well. 
most of more much of the month of uh, last period was spent with my being a sounding book. People are even either think that I still work with South Side Electric Cooperative because of the other situation that we have in the other use constantly as a sounding board for not only that, and uh, it is good that we had this shelter situation because some people called as a as a result. So if in fact those services were needed and whether they were being provided, and so that information was uh, was uh, passed on also. So hopefully, we won't get a whole lot more ice and so forth, and I'll uh, be able to do some other things. Go ahead. Thank you. I think that's that's a great point. You can't get away from your old employer, <laughs> can you? Then. Good. Um, let's see. As Roger was saying, attended. The, I'm in the same class that he's in. I'm just further behind in the schedule. <laughs> this isn't my last one yet. I will put plug into other supervisors. I think these are very good classes, um, and they take some time, but I think they're probably worth the time that they take. And, um, just the interaction with the other, the yep. other county supervisors, yeah. right? I agree. That's actually what I take away the most from is that you hear, there's large counties like Loudoun in there. You know, you hear some very different things. You're like, whoa, but it, right. yeah, you hear some very small counties. I think there's some things you pick up from all of them um, have been good. Um, had a, some conversations with some of the well, some of the Amelia Day committee members, and I think many of you may have seen uh, probably something more in the paper, but it looks like Amelia Day will have to be postponed due to the uh, restrictions on gathering size, and they are targeting an alternate event in the fall um, that I think we'll, they're working with and will hopefully come together well. Um, we, David and I both attended uh, the HR committee, at least one meeting, plus I'd say several follow-up discussions. I think there's a lot going on with that related to the salary study and what comes from that. We are anticipating a, a readout from Baker Tilly and I guess probably us too <laughs> mm -hmm. to uh, for next month. Uh, so do you think we're making progress? A lot of follow up conversations around budget stuff because it's that time of the year uh, and follow up conversations around parks and rec as there's a, a lot. Like Mr. Springer was saying, there's a lot of interest in that uh, going on. And then uh, finally, a fiscal committee on crossroads uh, had another meeting and then meeting again next month. That 1 is um, continuing to be very active, which I'll say. All right, thanks everybody for that. We'll move on to our planning and zoning committing portion and turn it over to Ms. Steele to walk us uh, through those items. We've got three items on here. Yes, yeah, so you all already heard these at the planning commission meeting in February for the joint public hearing. Um, so we'll do them each one at a time. So the first one is an amendment to the Amelia County Zoning Ordinance to reduce the required front building setbacks in the M1 and M2 industrial zoning districts from 100 feet on all public and private roads and 25 feet from access roads to 75 feet for lots with frontage on arterial roads and 25 feet for all other lots. We did have some follow-up conversations after the planning commission meeting. Um, so at this month's meeting, you will see some additional um, ordinance proposals for lots that are on 360. So keep that in mind as well. But this is the one you're considering tonight. So if you have any questions, happy to answer. Do you think there's any concern with approving this one now and, and the, the delay between the other adjustments for 360? The only the only concern might be that if the, if the proposed change for the 360 overlay doesn't get approved, then we're stuck with this. It's true. Yeah, but this was uh, yeah. This <laughs> meant by approval. So, so I don't. I, I I mean I don't want to speak for the planning commission, but I think it's reasonable what wants to be done. So I think it'll it'll probably pass. Okay. We've got a, we've got a motion on the the floor. Uh, motion to approve this change. Any other discussion on that motion? Thank you for making that point. All right. All those in favor of the approval, sign aye. 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 Any opposed? Same sign. All right. Okay. The second amendment is an amendment to the Amelia County Zoning Ordinance to reduce the minimum required lot area within a district from one acre to 10,000 square feet in the M1 and M2 industrial zoning districts. This was also unanimously approved by the Planning Commission. For approval. We have a motion to, motion to approve. Thank you. Discussion on the motion? 
All those in favor, respond with a sign of aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. All right, thank you. That through that pass. All right. Perfect. Last on the agenda. is a special exception permit request from Brian Harris. He is proposing to convert an existing portion of the building in the Amelia Bottom into an automotive repair shop. Um, as we talked about at the public hearing, there'll be minimal changes to the front of the building. His shop would be along the side. And he, as he explained to you all, there'll be sound barriers and all the appropriate measures to make sure it's not disruptive to the neighbors and the surrounding community. Um, but Mr. Harris is here tonight back there. So if you guys have any questions, I'm sure he can field those for you. I just want to say, I, I, personally, I'm excited with between your business and the comic book store. That's two new businesses moving into uh, one of our older uh, areas of development in the courthouse uh, space. And I, I'm very excited to see something productive uh, occurring down there. So. Any other comments or questions uh, for Mr. Harris or Ms. Steele on this one? I move to approve, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. We've got a motion. Any discussion or on the motion? All those in favor, respond sign of aye. Aye. Uh, Any opposed, same sign. And the motion passes. Uh, Ms. Steele said that, but just for anybody with watching the recording later, do you want to be really clear that all three of these did have a public hearing? While we move quickly for tonight, the Board of Supervisors did have the, the joint public hearing with the planning commission as well as planning commission um, discussion and, and hearing as well. So lots of opportunity for input on those. Anything else for your, for your section? Not for that. All right, moving into the next section, we'll go to your other topic then with the 2022 to 2026 capital improvement plan. All right, so this I think will be about the fourth time you all have seen this. So you could probably give this presentation okay. for me. Um, the Planning Commission subcommittee met February 8th to discuss the planning commission, the CIP for this year. Um, they ranked by priority instead of in a one through whatever list. Um, they put, they divided things into top priority, medium priority, and low priority. Um, and they didn't feel like within each priority, one was ranked over another. Um, this went to the planning commission at the February 22nd meeting, and it was unanimously approved there. I haven't received any calls or concerns from the public about any of this, um, but if you all have any questions about it, happy to field those. And I know Kent is here tonight if you all had questions, because I know some came up at the workshop. Yeah, and I, th I think we just continue to clarify as some of us, we've still got three who are newer <laughs> to this process. Any motion uh, that we do tonight is then for approval or for to acknowledge receipt of the uh, recommendations from the planning commission, which we will then factor into our final budget. Uh, it, is, it is not an automatic approval or denial based on what's been submitted. Do you have any questions for Ms. Steele or Mr. Emerson? So, give me a motion to just uh, receive them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, we've got a mo motion on the floor to acknowledge receipt of the uh, CIP plan. Any comments or questions? All those in favor of the, mo remo the motion, response sign of aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Thank you. Uh, with that approved, uh, so we've, we've, um, We've had some discussion about, you know, getting the we planned most recently every 2 months, trying to look for the existing CIP items and getting a report on status. Can we get that? Uh, we've talked about it a lot, but I don't know if we've really made it official. Can we get that started officially with our. April meeting then, and then go every 2 months from there. So we're talking about capital improvement Current. projects Current. or. Capital projects that the public works department is working on. Capital improvement plans, official CIP okay. projects. Okay. Re regard, okay. yes. That's the, the wrong list. So the existing approved projects, regardless of who is owning it. Okay. So it would be some, some of from from Daryl's team. Some will be okay. from Kent. Some will be from you okay. know, a variety. A list of twenty-eight. So different 
different to, than what you saw this weekend. Right. That was okay. helpful. That but, well, I, I think that's the point. I'm trying to get some clarification here. Well, that's actually very helpful. And to be clear, understanding what public works is doing is great. But specifically on the progress against these, and yeah, that's current funded projects list. There you go. Currently, funded process. Process. yep. So it's paid by 21. 21. It's yeah. Oh, okay. Is that one? I guess I can't tell when that's as of though. Uh, no. So, okay. Maybe that's part of my problem. So it's there's one in page, page 111 of our PDF book, but that's I can't look at that. But there's no status. Know, right. No status. And that's then. The project you're saying. Yeah. Oh, well, actually, there there is no it's, it's on hold or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's in progress, but I thought this, but yeah. So maybe it's also the date of like when is this as? I thought this was a carry forward of one we had seen before, or repeat of one we'd seen. Maybe it's being updated and we just can't tell because there's not an as update. Who would have updated it, Carla? She's here. No, I didn't update that. Yeah, so I I'm think not this sure is exactly where we're looking. I think this is exactly what we're looking for. We'll just say every two months, starting April, then just updated, and I think what's on here is fine. Just make sure it's fine. I give you a running, running right. record of what's going on. Exactly. Who's doing where? Yeah, and then when they close. Just one more, one report that it says it closed, and then it just drops from just drops from there on. We don't need to keep. I think we weren't clear. So is is that clear? Is that clear now? Okay. I'm looking up one eleven now. This one. To make sure we get the right one. Yeah, I think there's. If that page you just had is page one eleven, yeah. um, that is what all the statuses that Daryl gave me when he initially submitted his CIP stuff for this year. Mm -hmm. So that's back from January and hasn't been updated since then. Yeah, but good report. So, so we'll just. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's we'll go turn it over to you, the county administrator's report. All right, under the county administrator's report, I'd like to start with Mr. Goff, if I could. Mm -hmm. Mr. Goff is here. We've uh, got new employees. You know, we like to bring them forward, and Mr. Goff has a new employee, and he would like to make his official introduction. Um, I'd like to introduce Hunter Harvey, who's our new wastewater treatment plant operator in the uh, He's been with us about a little over two months. Uh, he's doing well as a fast learner, and uh, he helped out tremendously during the ice storm, volunteering to work extra time to keep things going. So, um, so you're all Hunter Harvey. Thank you. Welcome. We appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Um, while you're just mentioning people, I just you want to confirm. So, that's DMV is on everybody's topic list. I think. I believe you reported to us. You do have uh, the position now. The DM, uh, other DMV position filled, and the person started on Monday, right? She started on Monday. She's a quick learner, and you know the way the way our lives are. We. It's somebody that uh, has been out sick for a couple of days, and this girl has just picked things up and done really, really well. And she'll like that term. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a term she appreciates. Okay, so, okay. Well, good. Nice. <laughs> She's had a really, really good start. She, she picked up more in two days than I was able to do in three weeks with a downtime. Really, All right. really pleased. Thank you. I'm glad to hear. Glad to hear that position filled. So, what about the other open? We've got it. Yeah, the other open one is um, environmental specialist, right? And like uh, okay. deputy. Yes, the environmental one. Um, really having some trouble getting that one filled. I know Kenny and Patty have been reaching out to all of their contacts and other counties with DEQ and soil and water, trying to get applicants in. Um, as of now, I think it's been open two months and we've only gotten two applicants. So definitely spread the word. It's on the website. Share it. Go crazy. Um, haven't gotten a lot of applicants for that one. So still looking, still open. Definitely yeah, being made though. Yes, yes. It's on VACO, VML. We, I mean, we have it out there. Uh, yeah, and I shared it around last week too. So post, yeah, anybody we can share it with. Yeah. 
All right. Sorry, we get you back to your okay. regularly scheduled agenda then. All right. The uh, the waste management check this month was down about a hundred thousand dollars. And I made an immediate call. Mm -hmm. I was hoping I knew what the answer was. And February is a short month, so it's typically going to be uh, a little bit down. But they were very much affected by the ice storm. So uh, Brian thought that that was just a, a blip in the radar, and everything would be back. So well, that's what we're expecting. Uh, the CRC. Submitted their items of interest for February. I think uh, Mr. Scott could probably address those if anybody's got any questions. Those are under tab number 10. And that uh, I think Mr. Scott did mention in his report that uh, we're not eligible for some of that EDA funding. That's been the story ever since I've been around, ever since the early 1990s. You know, we're, we're, very, very fortunate in where we're located. Yep. We're within a 45 minute drive of a position that is fully will fully compensate you for your education, your talents and your efforts. And our people work them and our demographics are better. So we're still going to try to work through these some of these programs with our adjoining counties. But uh, that wasn't the first time we'd heard that you're not eligible. Okay, the DMV select. Oh, anyway. That's right. Oh, I agree. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah, we're that fine. They're with that line where I mean, everything you said is definitely right, and yet it's not really where you want it to be either. But we definitely pulled our share, if not more, of the effort to get the region certified. Yeah, no, we, we're, mm -hmm. we all participated in that SEDS committee for months. months. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, DMV select. The gross collection or excellent net collection was 68,747. I think that's pretty much in line. Uh, the accrued compensation for calendar year 2021 is 6635. Uh, be glad to answer any questions about that. So I wasn't I wasn't on the board when this when the move for the DMV select was made, what's generally speaking, is it meeting our expectations as far as both revenue and costs, or where do you think from your recollection of what was projected? I think the hope was that it is the service that pays for itself. Mm -hmm. And we we've, we've not gotten to the point where it pays. But there was concern of some board members at the time, if I remember correctly, that Due to the online and everything, that the numbers would drop, and we're not seeing that, which is a good thing. It's costing the county money every year, but not a lot. Yeah, and it's not getting worse. Well, that's what we should be in the service, and it's a service we need. It's a service we need. I've, I've well, spent definitely service we need. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've spent too much time in there in the last three weeks just because of the personnel things. Mm -hmm. Thanks to Holly and Carla, I'm able to to stay back there some. But when Blackstone closes down, when we have 300,000 people in Chesterfield that can't get an appointment anywhere else, we are constantly dealing with people that live in Woodlake, Midlothian, different places. And the random one from Amelia who comes in that hasn't been able to get an appointment and all, I, I feel their frustration. It's, there's no way to really say, well, if you don't have a 23002, uh, zip codes, we're not going to take care of it. But there, there are a couple of things that we've been looking at, a couple of things we've been thinking about, and, and hopefully we're going to be able to process people quicker with the, the new lady. Whenever the technology gets here and this, the networking equipment is already in the building and we can handle the phones a little bit differently, we can take some of the talent that we've got in there that's really good at processing titles and get them out of the communication business and put them into what they can do and they do very, very well. And when we get to that point, I think we're gonna we're gonna realize that we've made some uh, vast strides. Now, I appreciate your I appreciate you acknowledging the that there are some complaints and concerns. I mean, I agree it's an incredibly valuable service, but it's probably the number 
gotten to be the number one complaint that I see and hear. Um, Vita, number two, probably. At least we can deal with number one. Um, I think if I think specifically about what some of the complaints are, I think it's the the scheduling piece. So we got the report that you forwarded about some of the other uh, DMV selects around the the state, and not all of them are requiring the advance appointment. I mean, have we thought about whether we just say first come, first serve in, and whether that would actually help? And there's pros and cons to be clear. I realize it's not an immediate. The way our environment is, mm -hmm. we we will not meet the governor's social distancing requirements if we have come one, come all. It's too close to the end of the door. You wouldn't be able to stretch people out long enough. Mm -hmm. That would uh, that would be a, a real issue, we think. Um, the online that we looked at doing that. A big part of people getting their appointments is there, there are four things that you ask. What's your name? What's your telephone number? What type of transaction do you want? Fully a third of the transactions folks want, we can't do. And if we were doing them online, they would knock their slot out. They'd wait three weeks to come up here. And then somebody at the window would say, well, I'm sorry, we don't do that. So we would lose the time and with the appointment, that that space, plus somebody would go away mad or even than when they came in. So we, we just think that if we head towards the telephone thing, be able to turn folks over quicker and whenever the space and it's relaxed, we'd love to be able, and I think we could do it. I think you could run appointments for the titles because they take 15 minutes apiece. But I think we could do bulk up renewals because they take two minutes if you've got everything straight. So we'll we'll see what the next set of rules that they release say when uh, Ms. Coleman and uh, I'm sorry, Ms. Johnson gets 100% up speed. We should probably be able to increase our production and efficiency. Uh, What's her name? Well. Chandra. Chandra Johnson. We've gone from Chandra to Sandra <laughs> to Chandra. Oh. Okay. I think I think you have a good point with the phones. Um, I understand your point of the schedule. I, I do because it, that's the point of it. Select right. You need, you can't do everything. I do think if we could get the phones answered, and I don't I don't get the sense it has to be someone who's an expert in DMV, but just mm -hmm. I think if we could get toward that solution, that would help people a lot. I, I can tell you personally. When you answer the phone and they hear a live person, which they don't get in a lot of places, and you say, please give me the information and you will get a call back within 24 hours, it's like an air goes out of a balloon. Mm -hmm. That's all I wanted. That's mm -hmm. that's what a lot of them say. That's all I wanted. Yeah, so, oh, I agree. Um, you're preaching to the choir. Well, well, I do. About that. I do agree. Okay. I'm sorry, that's all comments on. Yeah, no, no, I'm a good time. Thank you, else. Okay. All right, the Virginia Legal Aid Society, they've submitted an annual report for 2020. That's under tab 12. Piedmont Senior Resources has submitted their newsletter under tab 13. The Advocate. And that is it for. Those reports. So, Mr. Chairman, we're down to board member comments unless okay. anybody else has got something. Yes, sir. Yeah. I just wanted to say, and Frank, I'm sure you can speak to this too, but PSR has really stepped up during this whole COVID thing. They are serving so many meals to shut ins, people who can't get out. They're doing uh, virtual caregiver sessions because caregivers can't go into the homes. And they have just really, really stepped up. Picking folk up to COVID. Yeah, they're picking people up. And I was going to say something about yeah, that. They're yeah, picking those, people up yeah. to bring in COVID vaccinations. And they've just really done a great job. Nice, I'm glad. And they actually, as we saw from the last budget discussion, they asked for very little from our county contributions, too. Yes. So that's uh, it's an incredible benefit for the county for what we pay into directly. I realize they do off they do operate off of other government funds too. But yeah, but for what we pay, we get a lot. And yeah. and the other thing is they showed us their statistics 
months and months ago, I asked them to start showing us statistics on how much of the service they provide is given to each county. And, and it's a percentage and a quantity. And they started charting it. And Amelia last month was up 90% of where it used to be. That's right. Oh, wow. We were at the bottom. Uh -huh. And we have, they're just serving more and more clients in Amelia now that, due to that because you could see it, how the disparity. Uh -huh. Prince Edward and Nottaway were getting everything. And it's because it used to be in Nottaway and now it's in Prince Edward. Uh -huh. But we were pushing that, you know, we need to spread this out a little bit. Everybody pays basically the same, right. but we're not getting the service. Right. So we're getting a lot more now than we used to. Thank you both for pushing on that. Yeah. And Mr. Scott, uh, jog my memory. Mr. Emerson volunteered to come tonight. If anybody wants any questions or would like to hear a little bit about the mass vaccination, he's uh, he's interfacing with the Department of Health with that, and he uh, he'd be glad to answer any questions anybody might have as to how that's going to unfold. I've been intimately involved involved with it with him and. Uh, Make, make it, it, so it, so I don't have any questions. Let me, let me make some few general comments. Yeah, okay. yeah. Mr. Emerson, could you still brief and please? I can be brief. <laughs> <laughs> As Mr. Scott mentioned, uh, there is a vaccine clinic that's going to be going on. It's March 24th, next Wednesday. It's been advertised. It's going to be at the middle school. The school is gracious enough to work with us and the health department for that. Uh, it will be by appointment only, so the citizens are still going to have to go through the process that the state has to register. And I know that is upsetting to some of the residents because they are calling and being told that they can't sign up for that particular event yet. And the process is that they have to sign up for the vaccine. And then between now and next Wednesday, the health department call center is going to be calling them back to register them for our event. That's the process that the health department has and that it's beyond our control. Right. But it will be held uh, next Wednesday, the 24th. The, we've been told that the vaccine will be the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, which is the one shot, one shot. Yeah. vaccine. Yeah. And it will be a drive-through clinic. They will come in and receive their vaccine after they do their registration park and wait the given amount of time that the health department asks them to wait and then they'll be allowed to leave. Do you feel comfortable with the volunteer with the response you're getting for volunteers? Do you have everything that you need? We don't have enough volunteers just yet, but we are very we're doing very well, yes. Good. We could take a handful more, but we're doing well. We we should be fine. Excellent. I don't have any concerns about that. That is in the paper this week. I suspect yeah. it will. And it's going and it's going around nicely on Facebook. Yeah, I think yeah, it's, some, it's uh, been shared a lot. Yeah. It's, it's getting around. The biggest concern that I've seen has been the people that are, are calling to try to register for that event and the health department just will not do that. Yeah. I had a couple of people contact me today. They were concerned because in the in the monitor it said we're gonna have five hundred first shots. And they assumed that meant Pfizer or Moderna, but it's not supposed to be, it's supposed to be Johnson and Johnson is yeah. one shot. Nobody yeah. will be at Johnson. Yeah. So, <laughs> no, I'm not blaming you. Just... The newspaper was trying to get information oh, yeah. for some time, and it's been fast it's moving. Fast moving. Yeah, I don't hear it as blame. Just no, I'm not blame. I'm just one trying to clarify which one's yes. right yeah. because maybe he has yeah. more. Something, something. It's the first thing the last. So it is still yeah. no one until <laughs> still the first one. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> That's the first. That's when I found out what Well, I think that, that's good because if that means they don't have to come back, then that's even better for us. It means when they were done with that number of people. I had a call, I had a call before I left to come tonight. Uh, the, the person I'd been talking to off and on, I told them that you got to get on that state list, on mm -hmm. the state list. Yeah. And I told him to work because I got my second shot today. Good. Uh, and it does work. It's it's just slow. It's it's slower than you know. nobody's fault. It's just the other question I've had is um, people say, "Well, I called the local health department and, and signed up," and I'm telling them, "Great, but you should still go on the website or the or call the hotline and check the list because it's you can just click on the button, check the list, put your name in, and it tells you whether you're on it or not." Oh. I wouldn't assume that 
because you called there that you're automatically in the database. You should be. Right? Let's just double check. Double check. Everybody can double check. Yes, I agree. Do you, you want to mention how it's news the publication at the same time? Well, like there's with that or it's your... no, if you if you want me to. I'm yeah, not. I think we could just we're okay. going through general so updates here. I've talked to Frank and Joseph about this, but I've been talking to a lot of people in Farmville, including Dr. Adekoya, pretty much on several times a day regarding the vaccines. And um, a thing that in the African American community, not only African American, but white too, there's a concern about getting the vaccine. There's a lot of people who are anti-vaxxers. There's other people who are just afraid. And what they did in Farmville, they're doing is um, letterpress communications is putting together a mailer, and it has a prominent African African American person. I don't know who it is, but from Farmville, saying, "I got my shot. It's safe. You should get yours too." And so I would like to propose that in Amelia, we have Frank as a prominent African American and Joseph as he, they both had their shots to do the same thing, but not just African-American, both. And the cost would be completely reimbursable by FEMA. It'd be about four grand, but it would be reimbursable by FEMA. That's great. So if you get more people are okay with it, I'll go ahead and make it happen and get reimbursed. It would be mailed to every household in Amelia. I'm, I'm I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine. I think we need a vote on that. Or I'm okay with it. Uh, if we go spend money, I think wouldn't hurt to have a vote. That's good. We can make we can make it our support official. Do we, do we have a motion to support the doing the mass mailing to every citizen, every household in Amelia um, regarding the vaccine? All the okay. Vote. All those in favor, respond to sign of aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Same sign. Thank you. And I think that's great. Uh, even if it wasn't getting personally, even if it wasn't getting reimbursed, I think that's a good thing to do for um, health and safety, but even better that it gets reimbursed. Um, we're a little out of order, but how about since we've, we've gone on some good topics in yours, you want to just finish out your um, board member comment section? Oh, okay. and we'll rotate, yeah. Are you okay with that? And we'll, yeah. Then we'll just rotate back. Well, I had three things I wanted to talk about. It won't take too long. But number one, I gave blood today, which is not a big deal, but the big deal is there's this young lady named Peyton Coleman. Oh, mm, yeah. This is her fifth. She's a high school student, and this is her fifth blood drive she's arranged. And I think it's just awesome that we have somebody that's that young and that cares that much about giving back. So I just wanted to give her a shout out, and hopefully it could go in the paper. She's done five now, and I've been to, think, I think, four of them. Um, number two. Some of you have seen it, and I'm not going to try to cure Facebook overnight. Obviously, Facebook is Facebook, but there's an awful lot of misdirected vitriol and and mean spirited stuff going around about the Wells Fargo building and other things that, that the board and the government in general is doing. And I just wanted to say, and obviously, we can't fix it, but to tell people. If they want to know what's really going on, that all five of us are willing to talk to them at any time. At least I am, mm -hmm. and I would hope you guys would be too. Yes. To try to help them understand the way things really work, because there's just so much garbage out there. Yeah. And uh, the third thing, I've discussed this before, but I feel really strongly that anytime somebody from the public comes to this board and makes a request, that they get an answer. And last week, Allison Cruz came and asked about, I think it was last week, about these signs, these, these reflective signs. I think the general consensus was we don't want to do it, but I think we owe her a formal answer. No, we're not going to do it, and this is why. I checked into it a little bit. In five years, only 165 signs have been issued by the Sheriff's Department. We have 9,520 parcels in Amelia, and roughly 5,000 have improvements on them, meaning like a house. So it would cost about $72,000 to give everybody that doesn't have a sign a sign. I'm not saying I support it. I'm just trying to sh explain wow. the, the scope of it. Mm -hmm. And I just believe we should give Ms. Cruz an answer or anyone else that thinks that it's a good idea. 
we did we we discussed it. I didn't know when to bring it up tonight, but um, David and I did talk about it, and um, I talked to Stephanie about it as well as spoke to Daryl about it and too, and just in the county our size, the, the logistics not only of just buying the signs, but the manpower it, it, in both offices, the budgeting side, this you know, I, as well as the manpower to install them, and then it would be expected that the county would maintain them. You know how that goes. Yeah. If the county touches it, it's yours. Yep. Yeah. And they would be calling him to cut every limb, branch, weed eat around them. It's just a, a county our size, um, and we we discussed it. Um, we just don't see where it's it's feasible. You know, it'd be nice if more people would take their own initiative. And it's really disappointing that, that it's only 165 people. I know. I plan to do a post about it. I took a picture of that mailbox they have in the lobby of the sheriff's office, and I'm going to try yes. to promote it. And I, I agree. That would be another great promotion. I think we should promote it more. I guess it's been in the paper before or whatever, but if we could just try to promote it. I, I don't want to spend $72,000 either. I don't think it's a good idea. As soon as somebody gets one and a snowplow hits it, they're going to want it replaced. Right. That's But, yeah. but I just think as a general pra practice, if a member of the public comes to us and asks for something, like this gentleman tonight about the gym, mm -hmm. I think at some point he deserves an answer. Thank you. Even if it's, you know, we're working on it, we agree it's an issue, but it's going to take time to resolve or what, whatever the answer is. Yes, no, maybe right. they just deserve an answer from all of us. I agree with that. I don't think I've been very clear. So this is a good, I'm glad you brought this up. You know, you'll hear me say I put that in my note, et cetera. Every public comment that we've gotten that has felt like it needed a response. I, I've noted in place, and I was just checking, I do have a note still about Allison's. I did intend for us to get to a point of following up on that. I think we need a little better process probably, and I think you bring up a good point, but I totally agree we need to, to respond. I, I, I'm challenged with the, the cost of it too. I wonder if there's something we could look at around some, I'd like to try to some, find some balance or middle ground sometimes that like rather than giving them away for free, is there a way we could subsidize them a little bit, you know, to drop the, what do we say the cost is 20 or $25 or household, you know, 15, 15 okay, you know, could we drop, is there a way we could drop it to 10, you know, and bear a little bit of cost, but it would mean then that people have a little more skin in the game too. And I'm coming on it today, because we had them made, and then the president paid for them. We, yeah, the sheriff's office actually makes them. Right. They got the, the green reflective metal made, and they put the they put the numbers on it in right. the in the sheriff's right. office by hand. So it would so if, if we did this, it would have to go somewhere else. They can't they can't do it. They can't have that right. thousand signs. Right. No. Who, who's gonna put it up? Are we gonna make them? And... I don't know. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not making the proposal. I'm just saying we could, we, we, put up, we put them up with direction. There's stuff. I would say they're self-installed, though, aren't they? Like two they screws, just, you two screw them onto your mailbox. Yeah. Some counties have them longer that they stick in the ground. See, I think that's the ones I was thinking. When I said I was, yeah, okay. I mean, what I'm hearing is we we're not going to do it, but and I'm okay with that. Just yeah. let's spell it out. A promotion would be all right. But I think we ought to. I'm happy to promote. I'm. I'm. Ha I'm Man, with the motor, but I, I feel that we start ordering them. Not everybody's gonna put them up. Mm -hmm. Then they go request somebody to come put them up. Just go add more work on. Or worse, they just throw them in the trash if you send them to. Them. I, I, think, I think we promote it, claim liability on the county because we didn't. It, it, it opens a huge can of worms. Yes. I, I feel from from the governmental side. I don't disagree. You could say something to the extent to that uh, the benefit to having to have everyone up. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And things like that status. Way two vehicles had to come there or slide oh, forward. Exactly. Or something like that. There's a benefit for having it up. Yeah. I ordered two when I was talking to Reno. I had talked to um, Sandra Cole, who runs the Citizens Watch in Painful. And about doing that as a fundraiser and stuff. Oh. And, and COVID hit, they couldn't have a meeting. So we were going that route, or well, not that A route. It may be some other community that would want to get more involved in it mm -hmm. after we promote it. 
Sean, did she, is she lives in your district, I think. Would you be willing to have a follow-up conversation with Allison and kind of let her know the conversation that we're having tonight and to see if, I mean, maybe if she'll talk, there's some different ideas. that Because clearly I think you hear there's interest in everyone getting them. <laughs> That's not the, it, it's a, yeah, the funding and the liability piece. So maybe if, if y'all come up with some other idea as you talk to Allison and bring it back to us. Yeah, I mean, I can just speak for me. I mean, in general, I have not had other input Citizens have not been jumping like, yeah, absolutely. We need the county to do this. So, um, no. um, if anything, it actually negates the other way. Yeah. Uh, you talk about spending a dime. They, yeah. Well, no, but on the other hand, it's really beneficial to not only the citizens, but fire and rescue. Fire and rescue. Yeah. Right. Find the property. So, I think it's something we ought to promote, but not pay for. Right. Right. Along that line, I, I didn't take a note of this one because I think we last month's meeting, um, a pastor that came and spoke. I can't remember his name. All of a sudden, I think you were going to send him a couple names. Mr. Livingston. Liv Thank you, Livingston. Livingston yeah. Were you able to? You sent. I did. I haven't heard back from. That's fine. I think that's just that is along the Rogers lineup. We do intend to follow up with people, and I did make a note um, that I'm going to follow up for Mr. Springer's. I do want to follow up with um, Glenn and Daryl to just to see. Not, I don't know. If we're going to do something immediate, but you know, since we do have a longer term Parks and Rec, do we have some option plan? Have some options, et cetera, so we can get back to him at some point too. So I'll I'll take a follow up on Mr. Springer's. I guess maybe that's what we need to be more clear about going forward is who's got the follow up point. Okay. I mean, if that's a big need, that may be something we want to talk to the people doing the handle project. Oh, I mean, that could be a floor in the handle project, oh, like a handle building or something. I don't know. Just throwing mm -hmm. that out there, it's space that we would have available. Oh, that's kind of neat. Yeah. Pretty pretty in there with the windows too. Um, all right, let's let's go back on the schedule. Go back to Mr. Phelps. Just run and then run down with uh, comments. Okay. Um, like most of us, we attended the light it up light up the courthouse ceremony. Um, I want to thank Public Works and Miss Holmes. Uh, materials were purchased by our community, and installations were done by Public Works. They did a great job. I might have stepped on the new dirt grass at one time. Um, <laughs> it's great to see the community county partnership on this project. Uh, an idea was presented and how the money would be raised. There was a plan. She had a plan how she wanted to do it, and it was uh, completed. So I shout out to her. Thank you. Mr. Curry? Uh, on, on continuing with the uh, courthouse light up, um, we, when I say we, Crystal and I, out, outside of the board, so my private side, um, we have an idea for, for another ne next project, if y'all may have heard it the other night. Um, not discussing it yet publicly, but um, there'll be another probably fundraiser type thing. Um, we were talking, I mean, the, the courthouse in the Bay is rather unique mm -hmm. in that we have that, that huge courtyard out front. And the design, the layout, you know, most most courthouses are on the street, mm -hmm. you know, all, yeah. the, all the courthouses around the street. Um, and, you know, it's it's a, it's a beautiful area to take advantage of as well as like with the love sign coming, encouraging people to come to the courthouse, making it making it more user friendly park like attraction. Um, uh, you can drive through town most of the evenings and see multiple families uh, walking. You know, around the uh, courthouse square, around the sidewalks. Um, so we do do have something else possibly coming in the future. We're going to check on possible donations and prices and see what we can come up with on that. Um, um, also, I'm I'm excited about the uh, Wells Fargo building purchase. I think it's when you look at it from from this side, it's an invaluable piece of land to the county, being right next to the courthouse. The parking lot in itself is well well worth it and we could never build a building to to move our park over for what we made that purchase for. So um, uh, it was a great deal um, and I'm looking forward to them being able to move and everybody to get some more space, get up to date with code, you know, with state code and um, as well as be able to move the other offices. So everybody has, a, you know, just, just make it a little easier on everybody. Um, the only other thing I had is uh, we, we did get a, uh, since it's fresh, uh, just let everybody know uh, there's a possible threat of severe weather tomorrow evening. Um, we, we should all know by now to take 
uh, these severe weather threats seriously. So I hope everybody's prepared now and, and pays a little more attention when, when they do call for it. I hope it misses us, but just in case, you know, and uh, as always, have the citizens let them know that they can reach out to us or multiple people if they need something to ask. We might not be able to help, but we might know who can help you with your situation. So I always encourage, you know, if we, if we don't know your problem, nobody can help you at all. So just reach out to somebody and, and, and we'll try to point you in the right direction. Thank you, Mr. Harris. You good? Mm -hmm. And I don't think I have anything to add either. I think y'all have spoken well. I totally echo the comments on the lights, the Wells Fargo building, et cetera. So thank you. All right, do we, um, I think we have a very brief item for closed session, like super brief. Um, any other items uh, before we go into closed session? All right, then do we, do we have a motion to enter in closed section for its closed session pursuant to uh, Virginia Code 2.2-3711.3? For discussion or consideration of acquisition of real property for a public purpose uh, or disposition of public health property where discussion and open meeting would adversely affect the bargaining position or negotiating strategy of the public body. I move we go into closed session for everything you just said. Thank you. All in favor of the motion, respond aye. 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 Any opposed, same signs. Thank you. I'm taking a two minute break. I think that sounds great. Out of closed session. All right, uh, we're back from closed session. We need a motion to uh, then serve. I'm making a motion. Okay, thank you. Um, all those in favor of returning to open session, response sign of aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed, same sign. All right, we're back in open session. Seen a motion to certify that during the closed session, we only discuss items related. Um, to the exemption in Virginia Code 2.2-3711.3 related to acquisition or disposition of real property. So moved. Thank you. We'll do a voice to vote certify. District 1. I certify. District 2. I certify. District 3. I certify. District 5. I certify. District 4 certifies. Thank you. Any uh, motions coming out of closed session? No. No. No action taken. I have one more thing before we, before we adjourn. Good. We got to close. Yeah, you're good. Oh, are you, or is the meeting over? No, no. He's no. Oh, okay. He's one more thing before we close. Okay. Wayne called me when I went outside, and when you when we do our publication about the addresses, Wayne says there's already a law on the books that says it's supposed to be displayed. Yeah, it's in the ordinance. It's supposed to display. They're not. Yeah. Maybe give the sheriff a heads up that we're getting ready to do this, and I don't know. They may be. I want to give him a heads up. They we're getting ready to publicize this and maybe just a friendly reminder. Just a friendly <laughs> reminder for if you decide to start enforcing this. I told Raina I was going to do it. She was all for it. Yeah. Right. But, but just so everybody remembers, the ordinance does not say you have to have that sign from the. No, so, like, you, you have, have to have, have, you have to display the numbers. They numbered. I have to agree with you. I think that's part of the problem is we don't enforce some of our own ordinances, though. Maybe just a little. Chat with the sheriff and just say, "Hey, we're gonna do this." And if anything, so I initiate it. I'll talk to him. Okay, just a All courtesy. Right. That you'll talk to them, them, and you're talking about so, so. All right. Do we have a need for a continued session, or do I have a motion to adjourn? Thank you. All those in favor of adjourning, uh, response sign of aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. And we're adjourned. Thank you, Jeff.